I saw this boat on the dock and started to worry about Cyclops' rigging after the pumping feeling I had on the last voyage. What small lapse in maintenance caused this rig to fail? So I decided I would double down on my own maintenance. Today I'm working on uh, rig tension. And the reason why I'm working on rig tension is I felt a little tremble in the rig when I was sailing over uh, on my last leg. In order to measure the rig tension, I have said device made by Spinlock. I'm used to using the ones made by a different brand called Loose. Before you can measure the rig, you have to make sure other things aren't putting pressure on the rig. And those are, say, the topping of pulling the pulley support of the boom. We'll let the boom be supported by the vang. And then we also have to make sure the backstay is off, the check stays are off. You're just trying to let the rig do its normal thing. And then you go measure with this thing. Here is the Spinlock rig tensioning device in action. And I've had to do this for the inner and the shroud that goes to the top of the mast and the shroud that goes to the staysail, basically. This shroud and this shroud are both 930 seconds. This one's only a quarter. And so on the device, you have to lock in 930 seconds or a quarter, depending on that. After you get the wire in there, then you kind of try to reset this to zero. You get the wheel there and finally you read the measurement from here. And so now I have all the raw data. I'm going to go crunch that. And what way you crunch it is you look at, this is the kilograms of tension currently, and you look at the strength of the wire, and that percentage is the way they express rig tension. So let's go do that. Experimenting on how the rig changes as I add backstay. It helps me understand, you know, if I was going to overload the rig. This Rube Goldberg contraption is trying to measure the amount of pre-bend. See the main halyard's coming straight down from the top of the mast and I've measured the distance from the halyard to the top car. And that's 64, 65 centimeters. And I'm a bit embarrassed I didn't realize this issue much earlier, but look at the staysail. And similarly with the Genoa. And so, uh, if you look all the way up, the four stays are too loose on both of these sails. I'm going to lift the uh, foil, lift the mechanisms, and access a rigging screw that's hidden underneath the drum. And so it is down there. I'm sure you can't see it, but. The riggers have just come. The problem is you can see them in the background right over there. Those two furlers, they have a, a four stay and a staysail stay in them, and they need about four more turns on their turnbuckle. In order to tighten the rigging screw for the four stay, the sail has to come down. This scrap of line that allows us to lower the Genoa. Okay, now I'm attaching the messenger line, which will allow me to drop the Genoa. In essence, the Genoa halyard would be too short to lower the sail without this messenger line. When you're using the Genoa messenger system, you luggage tag it, but you use the diminutive end, the area end that doesn't have a real proper splice into it. Both the staysail and the Genoa now are on the deck and ready for tightening the turnbuckles. I wanted to start off with a big thank you to Ben Brig at Milo Rigging. They were fantastic. I had never accessed the turnbuckle before hidden by the foil. So it was good to have a professional tutor me on how to do it in the future. The lowest portion of the foil can be removed by three bolts, and it is wider than the rest of the foil, so it can be raised. Two bolts on the drum also need to be loosened to allow the drum to be raised. It is worthwhile to check that these bolts are secure every season. Now the drum and the lower section of the foil are free to move, you can hold it up with a line. This gives one easy access to tighten the turnbuckle. Then, after choosing the correct tension, just repeat your steps in the opposite direction. I thought I would experiment with one more click on the Jib Genoa halyard tensioner. So I have this little piece of line that goes straight to the mast winch. Off season, I'm very excited. I added a nice little winch handle pocket. Uh, when I roll out the sail, I'll put one more click on that for tension. There's no wind right now, so it's tough to do this accurately, but you can see how there's just a little extra sailcloth here. And so I think I need one more click on the halyard and that will be my base tune.
See now that as you come down, this guy, uh, this locking mechanism automatically pops out. There we go. Now we got one more click. Don't have to turn this unless you're actually fully dropping the sail. How many exposed bolts do you have? I have one, two, three, and a smidgel. Now we can see that this is better under tension, not as baggy. Okay, now we're going to ease the back stay. I'm a little, uh... It doesn't appear well in the video footage, but in person, you could see the tip of the mast move forward as the back stay was released. What's going on, Jace? <laughs> I'm just literally hanging out. <laughs> This is 50% of my mass climbing system. So there's a... Are your feet touching the ground? I am completely midair, <laughs> but not in a sense that really scares me too much. I think if I fell, I'd probably break my pride. But what this does is it won't go down, but it will go up. Okay. And if you had the second part of this, you could push on it. Yeah. And when you push, this guy loses its thing yeah and you can slide it up and then you reload it and boom now you're even higher that's so cool this is like visiting mount everest just <laughs> without all the lines